Coming up today, we're digging potatoes. So last weekend you saw them being planted. Today, I'm digging last year's potatoes. So some of them have actually been in the ground over a year, funnily enough. Anyway, they're still sort of all right. We're digging them for stock feed for cattle, but I'm gonna keep some for myself to eat until July when the new crop's ready. And I'm gonna keep some of the ones that taste really nice, Ulster Prince for seed as well. So here's today's video. Oh, and also you had a bonus one this morning. If you've not watched it, you can see the loader comparison in, in probably the video below this one, maybe. So here it is. Joe's on his way up with a potato harvester, so I'm going to get one of the tractors now and put some trailers in the field so we can keep all the different varieties separate. Oh, I've got three different trailers, hopefully I can put them all in the trailers and then we've, um, we can grade some for seed then. Got the dump trailer on a fast track, take this out to the field, come back, get the fence, take the other two trailers out and then this one, um, we need a dump trailer tomorrow for carting something, so I'll probably drop the, pot the potatoes off tonight for this, out of this one. Then the other two we'll keep. Uh, we're going to put piper in these because the piper make good chipping potatoes, but they also get slugs, so they're definitely going for cattle feed. The other variety, the sagita, they're really nice spuds, so I want to put some of them in bags to last me till the new spuds are ready. And then the other variety, I want to keep the seed because that's also prints and the seed's hard to get hold of, and it's the best new potatoes you can get. Quick update on the burst water main. This field's obviously a little bit wet still. I have diverted to the ditch the other side of the road. It does seem to be working because it's a bit wet there. But at least now water is not splashing into the field and the puddle, the other side of the hedgerow, somewhere about here now where the hedge looks dead, is pretty much all but dried up. So results, you just need to fix the water main though, don't we? I'm lifting the gateway blockers back across this gateway because we get a lot of fly tipping in here. So the neighbor was going in yesterday spraying a field at the bottom. So I moved them out of the way because he can't get over with his tractor and his self propelled, sorry, his trail sprayer. So I'll put them back now because he won't need to go in for a bit, but I can just drive between them with the Merlot, like the video the other day. Joe's here with the harvester. Folded it out now, hoppers folded down to that side. And then um, spuds will go up here. Up the web, that'll shake the soil out, and then we should just have spuds in the top. Got the red trailer on, the one we fix the drawbar on now, on the new fin. Face on the radio, digital radio. I can't put the radio up too loud, otherwise YouTube will think I'm playing unlicensed music and we'll block the channel. Bit of a breeze, I hope you can hear me. the grounds baked too hard we're running the, the harvester the tractor down the drills before we dig them to crunch it all up a bit so it's less lumps coming up the harvester Putting the last lot in the trailer now. The hopper lifts up and then it's got a conveyor belt in the bottom and it'll start discharging them. So these are the, the variety I wanted to keep for seed because these are the tasty new potatoes. Don't mash them. I was like, his tea's ready. Bit of soil in it, but it'll be alright. Got a steering axle in the back and driven axle so it can push itself along when it's wet. Doesn't 
normally the tracks are that big, but it's just what he had in the yard. That holds about six or eight tonne, the bulker on the front, which is this bit with the conveyor in. Fold down now and then it'll fold up for transport, so it's not too wide for going down the road. If you watch now, you'll see. And the drawbar will swing over and make it fit behind the tractor. The drawbar hinges there now, and that's going behind the tractor there, so it fits down the road. The windows in this tractor need cleaning. Big convoy back to the yard. Got the big ton of spuds on there. Joe's on the harvester, and Amanda's bringing the fence back. You can't see because the windows are too dirty. Uh, these were obviously what we grew for people to pick their own when this was sweet corn, uh, and there's just a few left, so. We just harvested them now and I'll run them up to Nick's for his cows. It's a bit dusty on the harvest them. Kind of like pretty grubby because I was picking the soil sods out that weren't falling through the web. Made the sample a bit cleaner. It's still a bit rubbish, but they just were worth digging rather than plowing them in or disking them in or anything. See the steering axle on the harvester there, steering and pushing the harvester out round so it makes the bend and doesn't clip the hedge as it goes out the field. I'll have to drive on the beans a little bit to swing out with this because the trailer's not got a rear axle. Oh. Joe's going to shunt, he won't get it in one, so he'll put a lock on in the opposite direction now a bit. Oh no, he can't because there's some bales of straw there. He'll back up and then go forwards again and hopefully get out. It's quite long and wide. It's a T7 315 if anyone's a New Holland tractor geek. There you go, see him flicking the harvest around now. Rear axle's going to steer out, so rather than it cut the corner and hit the hedge, We'll steer out into the middle of the road, hopefully, and um, they'll get out of the field. There he is. Textbook. Oh no, he's at the edge of the side. What's he doing? Yeah, no. No, he's out. That's all the spuds dug now. Like I say, I'm going to root through, get some for keeping for eating and then some for, for seed because Ulster prints are the best tasting new potatoes you can get. So I want to get some of them and then try and plant some as soon as I possibly can. This is today's quiz question. Does anyone know why there's a Beaufort scale for wind speed in a telehandler? If you do, leave a comment in the box below anyway. Quick update on Project Merlot. It's got a bit of rust down here, you see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that off neat, put a flap of rubber on and it won't rust again. It's just, just waiting for the guy up the road, he's going to paint it for me. Um, get it to him, hopefully this week, he'll get it done. And then there's not really anything left to do with it apart from fix the door handle. And that just needs some screws drilling out and some heli coils putting in and then that'll be done. So it, it's worked out pretty well to be fair. It, it doesn't seem to be anything mechanically wrong with it now. I mean, there was a bit of wear in things which we've sorted. But I'll run it around the yard and this this week before it goes to painting and then see if we can find any other faults with it before it goes. We dug this out the nettles the other day. It's a detachable trailer, so you lift the box off the top and it's a flat trailer. It's an Eiffel Williams. Is it worth anything? Is it worth putting on eBay or should I just scrap it? Let me know what you think. That's about all for today. You got a bonus video this morning because I did a load of comparison. It was going to be part of today's blog, but it ended up that long that I had to do it as a separate video. Anyway, it's it's there now. So if someone's particularly interested in telehandlers, they can go and have a look at it. Thanks yesterday to everyone that commented on uh, their ages. Unbelievable. It, YouTube is correct. There is a massive age spread. A lot more older people watching than, than I previously first thought, first thought. I thought it might just be children watching. Anyway, it's not. So if you're older than, I don't know who's the oldest, I think I saw someone that was 74. So if you think you're the oldest watching, leave a comment maybe. 
The other thing I've noticed as well is people comment on the videos in the first 12 hours, but then like half the people will watch them after the first 12 hours and over the coming week, but they then don't comment on the videos. I don't understand that. I don't know whether YouTube makes it more difficult to comment or they watch it through a TV rather than on a phone. And the most people that watch in the first 12 hours watch on the phone. I really don't know. I'm still trying to get my head around how YouTube actually works. But that's about it for today. Monday, tomorrow, normal working day again. Let's see what we can get done. So thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. And if you're, if you're not subscribed, click subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow.